A bear in Italy has been sentenced to death after attacking some hikers. Activists want a stay of execution. Yeah, why execute a bear, huh? Is it the bear's fault that it attacks some hikers? I mean, after all, they're hiking in the bear's neighborhood, right? The bear's a creature. It's, a, it's an animal. It doesn't listen to rules. It's not like, hey, I'm in the wrong zip code, you know? Animal rights groups in Italy are calling on authorities to lift a death sentence on a brown bear that attacked a father and son last week on a hiking trail in the northern region of Trentino. Did I say it right? The Trentino. Hey, it's in Italy. We are hiking within. We got bit by a bear. Fabio Misseroni and his son Christian Misseroni, ages 59 and 28, they were hiking on a path on Mount Peller when they say the bear leaped into their path. Was it really your path or was it the bear's path though? You know, the way you the way they say it is that it they leaped into the bear's the bear leaped into their path, but I really feel like they were walking on the bear's path. Let's be real. This is the bear's neighborhood after all. Another reason why this bear shouldn't just be killed. The bear bit Misseroni's leg before his father jumped on the animal's back so he could escape. The bear then bit and swiped at the older man, breaking his leg in three places. Aye. Misseroni jumped up and down and clapped his hands in order to distract the bear from his father before the animal ran off into the woods. Yeah, you know what? Misseronis, you guys should just count your blessings because you're lucky that you survived this incident. Uh, Italy's National Institute for Environmental Protection and Research Regulations call for bears that attack humans to be euthanized. Why? Because uh, you don't think they can be re rehabilitated? You, can't, you don't think you can rehabilitate the bear? Make them uh, love human beings? <laughs> Like it's the bear's fault. After the attack, Trentino governor Maurizio Fugatti signed an order uh, which allows the authorities to uh, capture and kill the bear. The authorities are currently trying to identify through DNA garnered from the saliva and the fur left in the claw and bite wounds on the father's and son's clothing. <laughs> they got CSI to track down this bear. Unbelievable. You get, there's many bears in that area. I imagine it's a mountain. If there's one bear, there's more bears. So you, you're going to kill this one and you solved your problem? Dummies? <laughs> Looks like there's been a number of bear attacks in this region in recent, recent years. Local authorities have a database of bear DNA collected from feces, fur, and saliva. Surveillance cameras are used to match the DNA to the animals. How much money are you spending on bear crime DNA CSI crap over there. This is just ridiculous. Uh, how about you just hike somewhere else, everybody? Is that a crazy idea? How about you go where there's no bears? Wow. Genius, huh? Now, there's a lot of people on the bears' side in this instance, as I am as well. Calls are growing for this bear in the latest attack to be left alone. There's an Italian animal rights group called Animalisti Italiani. Oh, I love that. Hey, we the part of the animalisti italiani, and the the also the worldwide fund for nature have called on the local government to stop the order to kill the bear until a full investigation has been carried out. Full investigation? What do you need a full investigation? So you guys are defending that it might not be this bear uh, until further DNA tests come back. <laughs> don't kill this bear. You don't know. The DNA could show that it, it was a different bear. Hmm. You're the animal rights groups or whatever the hell you are. It seems to me like your your angle is why are we killing bears that live on a mountain because a hiker went into their area? Like, how about you hike elsewhere? That's I mean, that should be your angle, right? I'm no animal. I'm no animalisti italiani worldwide nature fund person, but I feel like that's the right answer. The animal rights groups also want to research and uh, find out whether or not the father or the son did anything to taunt the bear, which the two men deny. Um, I love, you're going to put the bear on trial here. Is this what we're looking at? What is the bear? <laughs> yes, the bear's on trial. The, the bear's lawyer is a chipmunk. <laughs> hey, boo-boo. <laughs> I didn't mean to kill those hikers. Oh, that was a terrible yogi impression. Please forgive me. The Italian environmental minister also wrote a letter saying he is against the killing of this bear, which he said may have been a female protecting her cubs. Yeah. I mean, all of these little defenses you have of the bear, and perhaps they were taunting the bear, or there was a circumstance in which uh, a female was protecting the cubs. None of this solves the problem, in my opinion. Uh, you don't need to go through this much paperwork, in other words. 
You just keep people off the bear-infested mountain, all right? Let the bears have a world where they can live in comfortably without any humans walking through it unexpectedly. Is that crazy? Am I out of my mind? There's plenty of mountains to go around. There's plenty of places to hike, I'm sure, in Italy. Leave the leave the bears alone, man, is what I'm saying. Do you disagree? Do you agree? I don't know. Call the show, 646-450-2012. Call me up. Give me, I'll give you my address, and you send me Laguini, Laguini, Laguini. One in three pilots in Pakistan have fake licenses, says the aviation minister. Whoa. I better try and cash in that Pakistani airline ticket I have. Apparently, more than 30% of civilian pilots in Pakistan have fake licenses and and are not qualified to fly planes, the country's aviation minister revealed. Addressing the Pakistan National Assembly, Ghulam Sarwar Khan said 262 pilots in the country, quote, did not take the exam themselves, instead had paid someone else to sit on their behalf and take the exam. They don't have flying experience, he said. Pakistan has 860 active pilots serving its domestic airlines, including the country's Pakistan International Airlines, also known as PIA, uh, as well as a number of foreign carriers. PIA has grounded all its pilots who hold fake licenses effective immediately. Oh, way to crack down, PIA. <laughs> Listen, you guys with the fake license, we're not going to let you behind the wheel of a plane. Just going to let you know starting now. Well, no, actually, after, you, well, after your next flight, then we'll have you. <laughs> then we'll take away your license. Your fake license. PIA acknowledges that fake licenses is not just a PIA issue, but spread across the entire Pakistani airline industry. Oh, that is frightening for anyone in Pakistan who's looking to travel. Oh boy, guys, watch out. Some spokesperson named Abdullah Khan said uh, some of the fake pilots, in fact, also fly for foreign carriers. Oh boy. The results of the investigation were announced this week as part of a preliminary report into a plane crash that killed 97 people in the southern city of Karachi. The Pia plane crashed after taking off from Lahore, killing all but two of the passengers and the crew on board. Ooh, yeah, you got to crack down. Wow, look at the photos of this plane crashing. It's like right, in the, right into a building. Oh, this is terrible. This is what you get when people don't have the, uh, the proper licenses to fly things, I'd imagine. You get crashes, right? That's not a good thing to have. Um, frankly, I'd like to get to the bottom of uh, these fake pilots. I'd love to interview one. I want to know what's going through your head uh, that you think you'll be able to fly a plane successfully, although you haven't been able to pass the test or who knows how much studying that you've done. Do you think you just you could just get behind the wheel of these things and just go, 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 and it's no problem? I'll have someone take out take the test for me. But what about you? you you're not going to have any experience, of, uh, you know, and you're just going to jump behind the wheel. Yeah, how hard could it be? You know, press a few buttons. I've watched the movies. I played video games. Now, the 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 crash that they're investigating uh, involves some pilots that were, according to the report, very overconfident. They were told three times by air traffic controllers that the plane was too high and they they should not attempt to land, but the captain did not pay any heed to these instructions. The pilots proceeded with trying to land without lowering the landing gear. Yet you see something as rudimentary as lowering the landing gear. They can't even do it. Oh my goodness. This is just out of control, Pakistan Airlines. If you've survived a Pakistani airline flight, I mean, hats off to you. You know, you got to... One in three chance of just crashing on your face, apparently. Oh, man. You know, say what you want about domestic U.S. airlines and how everything's always delayed and the planes are overcrowded and it's overpriced, etc., cetera, et cetera. But, I mean, hey, at least our pilots, you know, they take tests. They pass. They have real licenses, I assume. That's, that's nice. That's something to celebrate. I had no idea that the world was filled with fake airline pilots flying hundreds of people around, <laughs> around, just, you know, just winging it. No pun intended. Just going to wing it. Oh, that was a bad joke. Forgive me. Japan University awards the very first ever ninja degree. Ninja studies. Oh, my goodness. This is fabulous. I wish I could go back in time and go to college again and take ninja studies. Ha <laughs> ha. What a good time that would be. Japan has produced its first ninja studies graduate after Genishi Mitsuhashi spent two years honing his martial arts skills and absorbing the finer traditions of the feudal martial arts agents. Oh, you get to take martial arts classes for college? This is outstanding. 
The 45-year-old Genichi completed the master's course at Mei University in central Japan, the region considered the home of the ninja. Hey, he's 45 years old. I guess it's not too late to go back and get a ninja degree. I never thought this ninja guy would be this old. Not This isn't old, but I mean, 45-year-old college student getting ninja degrees. In addition to researching historical documents, Mitsuhashi said he took the practical aspect of being a ninja to heart by murdering several people in his neighborhood. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. Here's what he did. Quote from him. I read that ninjas worked as farmers in the morning and trained in martial arts in the afternoon. So Mitsuhashi grew vegetables and he worked on his martial arts techniques in addition to copious ninja studies inside the classroom. With this combination, I thought I could learn about the real ninja, he said. Better known as black-clad assassins famous for secrecy and stealth, ninjas also had comprehensive survival skills, he added. Mitsuhashi, who also learned Kung Fu in a Japan, Japanese martial art known as Shorinji Kempo, teaches ninja skills at his own dojo and runs a local inn while pursuing his PhD. His PhD in what? Higher level ninja skills? May University set up the world's first research center devoted to the ninja in 2017 and opened a graduate course a year later. It is located in Iga which is 220 miles southwest of Tokyo, a mountain-shrouded city that's home to many ninja. To this day, there's still ninja living in Iga? I had no idea. I was in Japan this year. I, I would have loved to have gone to Ninja Mountain. How do you get into the ninja program? Well, the article says in order to enroll, students have to take an exam on Japanese history and a reading test on historical ninja documents. <laughs> yeah, where do you get those, huh? What are you doing? I'm just downloading historical ninja documents. What's it to you? Uh, the professor here says about three students enroll every year, but he thinks there's a demand. Well, not if there's three students enrolling every year. There isn't much of a demand. But I don't know. After I cover this on my uh, Weird AF News popular podcast, maybe there'll be several people that want to enroll next year, including yours truly, professor. Make way for some... Uh, some weird AF fans and weirdos taking your course. Oh, man, that'd be fabulous if I had a scholarship for this. <laughs> and three lucky weirdos will get to go <laughs> become ninjas on a mountain. Uh, that's crazy. The professor does say here that they get v many inquiries from overseas. But, but I have to say one thing. This is, a, this is a course to learn about the ninja, not to become a ninja. Just to learn about the ninja. Oh, come on. We want to become a ninja. Anyone can learn about the ninja. This hello, Google, you know? That's no fun. I want to become a ninja. You show us how to become a ninja. Uh, you know, Geniche has his own little dojo. He could show us, I'm sure, show us some moves. I want to learn some moves, man. I want to, like, learn how to throw one of those, those stars, some nunchucks activities. You know, I want to take nunchuck 101. <laughs> This would be a dream come true, man. Is it me or am, am I crazy? But this sounds like a a fabulous thing to do. I, I don't know what you do with a ninja degree afterward. You're not really going to be able to make money that way. <laughs> so, I see here you have a ninja degree and you're applying for, oh, uh, sales. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, well, if they, don't, if they don't buy what I'm selling, I'll just, you know, chop them in the throat. <laughs> My ninja degree coming to the rescue. A bear in Italy has been sentenced to death after attacking some hikers. About one in three pilots in Pakistan are using fake licenses, and a Japan university awards the first ever ninja degree. These are the weird stories for Monday. These are the weird stories for Monday. This is Weird AF News. That's what you're listening to. It is a podcast, a podcast hosted by a comedian who's recording in a closet. That's how much I give a sh- Hello. I love you. Won't you tell me your name? Hello. I love you. Let me jump in your game. What's up, guys? This is Jonesy, the host of Weird AF News, who occasionally sings very strange Doors songs in a strange voice. <laughs> no, that's actually the first time I've done that. But whatever. I'm highly caffeinated. Things like that come out of my face. Please forgive me. I hope you enjoyed the stories today. I hope you enjoyed the Florida Friday episode that just passed over the weekend. Hope you had a nice weekend. I uh, hope it was filled with uh, candy, candy and pina coladas. That sounds like a lovely weekend. Um, 
Yes, I want to thank everybody who sent me Florida Friday stories as well. I appreciate that. Super cool. Um, and uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, yeah, follow Jonesy on all the social medias if you're bored. I'm uh, on Instagram at Funny Jones, on Twitter at Funny Jones. Facebook is Comedian Jonesy. And my email is funnyjones at gmail.com. You can reach out to me, send me articles, uh, leave me a comment or, or whatever. Just give me a shout out. Appreciate that. Please tell a friend about the show if you could. That'd be very, very helpful. We love, we love to spread the word of Weird AF News around here. You know, a lot of people are watch are listening and watching mainstream news, and it's really, really kind of uh, depressing. So uh, maybe suggest a little something to take the edge off. You know, that's what Weird AF News can do for you. Uh, lastly, I'd love it if you checked out my Patreon because I put some bonus stuff on there, more material, and you can get access to this Weird AF related stuff. With just a couple of bucks a month. Yes, it's like buying Jonesy a cup of coffee. Why wouldn't you? After all, I'm recording in a closet here. I could use coffee. It makes me smile. It makes my insides very happy, except for when I have acid reflux because I drink so much damn coffee, I get acid reflux. (laughs) Guys, help me with the acid. (sighs) That's why I like cold brew, guys. Cold brew has less acid. (laughs) Uh, They just started offering cold brew at my workplace, which has been a blessing because now I can have uh, several cups a day and I don't have to worry about the acid. (laughs) I love how I just went on an acid rant. Ap- apologies, guys. Apologies. But sometimes these things are on my mind. Oh, yes. So check out patreon.com slash weirdafnews. You know the site. You know what to do. Go on over. And remember. Uh, remember what? I forgot. Hey, mainstream news. Listen to Weird AF News with Jonesy.